Jesus loves you and so do I. Thank you for bringing us Good job. Ready? Good. We are at 115. Okay, uh, the top of page 115 in the book. If you don't have it, don't worry, it's going to be up here on PowerPoint. Okay, so we've been going over this book, Understanding Demonic Entities. Trespassing spirits upon an unsuspecting humanity. We've gone through all the different types of spirits already. For those of you who haven't been here, now we're on we're on to the the demonic agenda and, our, and how they operate. Um, because it, like it says in God's word that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we're fighting against the spirits and the evil rulers and principalities in the spiritual realm. What page did you say? One fifteen. Fifteen. One five. One one five. Top page. Seven steps that give demons access. Mm. Okay. Uh, we were going to go over this the other night, but we didn't get that far. So um, we're going to finish that out and move on to possible signs of demonic presence. Okay. So we start here. In James 1, verses 14 through 15 in the King, New King, or the King James Version. So we're going to break down these uh, two verses. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now lust isn't just talking about sexual lust. It's talking about the lust to sin, any type of sin. And when we birth that lust in our heart, then it, uh, it leads to sin and death. Um, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. I got ahead of myself right there. That's what we see here in the word. So number one, this is in verse 13, it's saying, you're tempted, entertaining thoughts of illicit pain or pleasure. Now being tempted isn't a sin in itself, but it can lead to when you see like a pretty woman or a handsome guy or something and, and you're like oh they're pretty but then when you start dwelling on it and dwelling on it it'll lead to sin um, so here demonic entities will project a thought into your brain and then uh not the second part of uh verse 14 you're drawn away strong imagination obsession need to have demonic entities appeal to one's imagination So then, uh, third part of 14, you know, still is such a small verse, but we can still break it down. Uh, lust, delight in viewing it, imagining the immoral pain or pleasure. Demonic entities bombard one's mind with the experience. So then, again in 14, you're enticed. Weakening of the will, craving, looking for ways to do it. Demonic entities give reasons and justification to sin. So now you start reasoning. Well, I can do this, I can do that. Um, telling you, oh, God's going to forgive you, so you might as well go ahead and do it. So you just start entertaining all these different thoughts on why you can get away with it or how, but it, it, just, it just doesn't work. So now we're going on to verse 15. The lust is conceived, yielding, doing it with hopes of not getting caught. God sees everything. You're going to get caught. <laughs> That's why it says in, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, confess your sins. Um, uh, God says if you confess your sin to him, he is just to forgive it and cleanse you of the wickedness and restore your righteousness. And then it goes further on in, the chap in verse 10. It discusses how it's like um, everyone sins. Don't fool yourself. Everyone's been a, a, a sinner, but we're covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. 
So um, the flesh submits to the mental warfare. And then sin, sinful act committed, gratification achieved. Pain or pleasure gratifies and confirms thoughts. Okay. Uh, seven, death. Shame, guilt as a result of the actual acts of sin. This is where um, what shame does is it drives a wedge between you and Jesus and the salvation he brought for you. So then you end up turning from the word and even turning from a prayer and not confessing your sin. Um, and so demonic entities taunt. They taunt you and blame and rid ridicule you over and over again to drive you away. It tempts you to yield to sin and then turn around and makes you feel guilty because you yield to sin. So it's kind of a double-edged deal. Right? It is a double-edged deal. But you know why the reason why God said David was a man after his own heart? It's because David was always quick to repent. Quick to, yes, must, exactly. That's what we must do. Yeah. Don't don't let it linger too no, long. No, sure don't. And don't go to sleep on it either. No. As soon as you become aware, because even David wasn't aware of his sin. I mean, he had to have uh, help what, Nathan come and say, this is what you've done. Mm -hmm. And then it dawned on him and he repented. Because mm -hmm. sin will take you so far that you don't even realize you're walking in sin then. That's yes. right. So. And the, 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 the other thing is like we've been going over Wednesday nights about Knowledge is important. My people die for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And and Pastor Rogers always say, if you go to court mm -hmm. and you don't know what your rights are, those lawyers can take advantage of you. That's right. Yeah. So that's why we need to get into our word and understand the word and not just read it, but get into it. And not that we have power and authority to overcome it. And uh, there was this king back in um, ancient, uh, I think it was just but uh, they, there was a high priest uh, looking through all the different scrolls, and he found a scroll of the Old Testament and uh, one of God's commands, and he, he, it was a long lost scroll, so he gave it to the king, and when the king read it and realized his sin, he, he fell to the floor and, and you know, ripped his garments and put ash over his head and apologized to God. But that's the thing. We have the word here in our Bible. It comes easy to us, yet a lot of times we don't want to pick it up or feel like we don't have time. But we got to know our rights. Amen. Okay, so now we're moving into the next page. Um, possible signs of demonic presence. Now here it's, it's going to say that there's a partial list and that if you wanted to, you can go into Appendix B and C. Uh, a more full list, but I actually put it went into the appendix and uh, we're going to go over the full list. Um, okay, so we start off in Luke chapter 6, verse 45 in the New Living Translation. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. And, um, and it's like the, the word says that it's not what we put in our mouth that defiles us, but it's what comes out that defiles us. And it's what's in your heart that comes out. So you need to guard your heart. Get the word in there. Start renewing your mind. Start thinking the right way that God created you to think. Okay, so... We have aggressive or violent behavior, short-tempered rage, or making threats. So this could be a sign of uh, demonic presence, not necessarily possession. There's just, you know, a demon's in the room, and he's just hitting that nerve, getting in the middle of a fight and argument you're having with your spouse or relative, siblings. Uh, it can cause amnesia and you can't remember an event, people and places. And it's a little different than um, uh, what do you call it, dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, I, 
I've spoken with plenty of family members, and it's like, don't you remember this happened? They're like, no, that never happened. I'm like, yeah, it did. <laughs> you never had that. Um, auditory experiences, hearing things from the spiritual realm, uh, whether good or bad. Uh, also, the, it depends what you're hearing. And you don't know if you're hearing from God or from the devil or a demon if you're not close to God. So we're born in this world. God saved us through Jesus Christ. We were born again. And we have to start renewing our mind and getting into the Word so we can understand God's voice and not the devil's. So we can discern what's being told to us. And we also have to get into the Word and understand the Word to see if it lines up with the Word. Because, I mean, you get those uh, people that go crazy and kill their family and say that God told them to do it, but God's never going to tell Satan himself. Okay, automatic writing. Writing with both hands at one time, this is more of a you know, or even in multiple languages, this is more of an easier to catch and see if you, you really, I, that'd freak me out if I saw people doing that. <laughs> hey, me too. Run! Bite or claw marks evident on a person's body. Now, these are all things that have really happened um, with either possessed people or people being influenced from these demonic spirits. Uh, change in personality. As it implies, it's what it is. A change in room temperature. Room gets colder. Chill of death. Now we're going to go over a, um, if we have time, we're going to go over a video that uh, discusses this more in length about uh, room temperature and stuff like that. Um, change in social behavior. Extreme, reclusive, or hyperactive. Uh, confusion. Cursing or mocking God and Christianity. Embarrassment, shame, and guilt. Of course, uh, like we read earlier, that shame is only brought upon the condemnation of that demon or the devil. And that's how you can tell that there's a demonic presence there. But it's also in reference to one's uncontrolled behavior. <laughs> Say you got blackout drunk one night. And you have that shame, and you don't want to go before God and apologize or something like that. Or shame if someone, you know, was taken advantage of and got pregnant, and they're ashamed of the, the pregnancy. Um, because, you know, sometimes they put themselves in a, a bad situation. Um, external pain manifesting in different parts of the body. I don't know if you get like random shooting pain, unexplainable pain. I used to um, before I came here. A lot of you know my testimony. Uh, I came from California, and I was, for three years I was dealing with um, unexplainable nerve pain in my leg. Doctors couldn't figure out what was doing it. Medication couldn't help. And I would be writhing on the floor in pain up to eight times a day. And uh, finally, when I came here, second day I came here, Sister Karen came up and prayed for me. And I didn't have a single issue. I was yeah. delivered from that. Amen. My God. <coughs> obedience. Yes, for her obedience and mom. I was, I was kind of disobedient at first because Karen said she wanted to stand in the gap for someone that's having leg issues. And I was being disobedient, not wanting to go up. And then I ended up going up and apologized for my disobedience and thank you, Karen, for standing in the gap. Yeah. I was in pain. <laughs> it's like someone hurting. Okay. Glossolalia. Now, I looked up this word it says, it, the, what, in the book it says speaking in false tongues, but glossolalia is actually just speaking in tongues. That's the meaning of the word. 
but um, <coughs> in reference to false tongues, uh, you got to be able to discern um, the spirit that's speaking. Yes, that's, that's why they they teach you the Bible. Apostle Paul speaks about that if there's going to be somebody speaking in tongues in the church, there needs to be an interpreter. Because without an interpreter, then you can have somebody, and, and there's, a, I can't think of her name, it was something, Brown, Rebecca Brown wrote a book about when she used to be a witch, and that the witch would come into the church, and, and if they know that they don't have an interpreter, somebody speaking in tongues, that they will start speaking in tongues and curse. In the false tongue, like he was talking about here, they would speak in that, be cursing the church. Yes. So that's why it's important to have an interpreter, because without an interpreter, not supposed to be even speaking out loud in tongues like that to mm -hmm. prophesy in the church anyway. Okay. And another very noticeable sign would be unexplainable growling uh, during encounters. I've seen that happen before. That's that spirit just confronting your spirit. Uh, hell speak, unrecognizable whispers, utterances, or speaking backwards. Josh, if I can yes. You know, when I was majorly in the world, and I had spoke for like, I don't know, 22 years, 29 years, I really can't remember. But I mean, I was a major smoker. I enjoyed smoking. I just quite did. And so my husband at the time, he and I decided they had this big thing on television about this guy that uh, could help you get free from alcohol cigarettes and all kind of stuff so you know we went and i decided why well, i'm gonna quit smoking and so we paid our 65 bucks and i was the first one in the door and he kept telling me look at this black and white uh, uh black poster and it was just a circle and it was a green circle with black on it and it was a total circle and so he said, count from 100 backwards. So I started counting from 100 backwards. And the more I did that, he started speaking. And it was, I swear to you, it sounded like tongues. But I assure you, it was not. Mm -hmm. I had been right around it with my mother and whatnot. So I knew what it was to speak in tongues. And this sucker, that is really what drew me. And I think maybe that's why. Because you know, if, if you're open and you're stupid like I was and I'm very open I think that I maybe could have got free mm -hmm. but because of my stupid I knew that I knew something was wrong yeah. I quit speaking backwards and he kept telling me no no keep going and I flat looked at him and told him I don't understand what you're saying but I know it's not the same thing the church says and I mean, you should have seen the look on his face. And I said, because I know my mother does that, and that it, they're just not the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, my hair stood up on my arms. I broke into a cold sweat. I mean, if everything that could scream no, scream no. Yeah, when you're, that's also another sign of a demonic presence is when your hair stands on it. And you want to really thought, <laughs> you can tell them did you not know that? It's like, run! My first husband yeah. went in there to. Well, they're speaking those crazy tongues like your mother, and I stopped him on the heart and told him, no way, that was not what my mother does. No way, no. And he was like, no, I'm so just like her, and I was trying to tell him, no, it had nothing to do with what my mother does. Yeah. And so that that is, you're right, that can absolutely happen. Yes. But you can tell the difference. If you're a Christian, you can tell the difference. Yes, you can. And if you've been around it, too. I would say this. If you think you can't ask for discernment, God will give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, He will. Okay, olfactory experiences such as different smells, possible sulfur, rotten eggs. Uh, they say that's kind of like the, the scent of an evil presence. That is so true. Yes, I'm it not is. I the detail, but I met someone oh. and they were possessed and I was too young. I didn't know all that they're teaching now. 
Right. If I if I known then what I know now, I probably would have. I walked in and out, stopped, I turned around and left because we uh, we were doing a study here, like something and um about the smell. And I walked in this house. I said, you know what? I'm not doing here right now. I'm gonna leave. Called the office. I said, I'm not going back. <laughs> there was there was demonic big time. I left. So uh, recognition, precognition, and people say recognition, but it's the ability to tell future events. Um, a lot of the times, it's a, a, a spirit of divination that's doing that's doing that. Um, polyglossia. It basically means to speak multiple languages, but in this case, what they're talking about is speaking multiple languages within the same sentence. Especially if the person doesn't know that language. <coughs> uh, polyglotic voices, the ability to speak in two or more different voice patterns. Now, when someone's actually demon possessed, you can hear multiple voices. And that's what they're talking about here is the two different patterns kind of laying on top of each other. Well, it's just the end of it. Uh, Daniel, you know, Daniel's here and the lady sitting back about where Richard is. And she was talking in a man's voice. And then after you cast the spirit out of her, she got up and she was talking just as normal as everybody else did. But yeah, she had a very deep, low, kind of a growling voice. Uh, retrocognition, ability to accurately tell past events. Now, a lot of us, we don't, we don't have that good of a, an account. It's always different between everyone. But uh, this is talking about, um, I think it's, it's, it's more of a, a way of um, the enemy, um, what's that word? I forget about it. Accusing you. Saying, you know, this happened exactly this way, stuff like that. People can come up and just, or some people will just come up and talk to you about past events, and it could be a false spirit. Uh, again, a spirit of divination or or um, whatever, trying to get you to bring it up again. Um, scared aversion, sudden unexplainable fear of people or objects. Uh, seeing shadow people usually out of the corner of one's eye. I know I've seen, I, I mean, I believe, I thought I saw something. I'm like, I know something went past me. I know it. So you got to pray that out. Uh, seeing into the spirit realm, witnessing the demonic entity. So God will give us chances to peer into the spirit realm. But this is talking about seeing demonic things uh, that are meant to give you a spirit of fear, that type of stuff. Yeah. I understand about that, um, seeing shadow people. Um, I remember there was a time we were at uh, someone's house and uh, the light before the door we go out was, was on and on our way there, I saw a shadow move going out the door. Like not really, you know, open and going out, but go through the door. And I'm like, and it looked like a shadow of a person that moved. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, ah. Uh. Yeah, a, a lot of people say, oh, it's a ghost, but no, it's, it's a spirit, right, right. an evil spirit. I was like, and I, can, I, was like I can tell right off right. what that is. It's a person. <coughs> yeah, those, those things are obvious. I mean, even I didn't know Jesus when I was very first time. My first wife, she'd go and chant things in the, in the mirror in the bathroom. Do weird things. I do. Oh, you know, I mean, she's gosh. just weird. But when she do that so much, then yeah, I would see from the corner of my eye, like a stage from the corner of my eye, I'd see shadows going in our in our trailer in our mobile home. Mm -hmm. And she had cats. And we had this little round table that we used to eat on, of course, mm -hmm. with the tablecloth that was, you know, hung down long over the chairs. And I was watching one time and no hands or anything, just the tablecloth part came up. And the cat was laying in the chair right there, and the cat went, like if the cat saw what was doing it, you know, was looking at that. And I've seen on the curtain before, uh, 
like a hand, like up, like if you lean against the curtain with your hand on there, the little oh print that would be goodness. there, but nobody was there, and I would see that. Or if back in those days, I was when I was younger and can do it, I would sit on the floor a lot of times and watch TV back in the other day, and I would feel like you know if you were sitting on the floor and somebody walked by, you feel how the floor feels when you walk by. Mm -hmm. I would feel that all the time. Yeah. So that that's obviously the truth. <laughs> I mean, it's all true, but I'm just saying, you know. When you experience that, you know that is what it is. <laughs> you know. You know, I, I believe that God lets us see these things sometimes, you know, to add to our witness, you know. When I got delivered, you know, God allowed me to see the demons leave my body. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not that big and they're not that scary. Yeah. But I think he allows us to see that. He, he, he will allow us to see it. Um, I mean, there was no to let us know that we're in danger or something. Right. Yeah. I wasn't a, I wasn't possessed, but I was oppressed. Oppressed, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got. Uh, it's, I think seeing into the spirit realm. Like, there's sometimes where I'm sleeping, and um, I'll get uh, sleep paralysis. I usually get sleep paralysis. I can't move, and no matter what I do, I just can't move, even if I want to move right away. And I think seeing into the spirit room is sort of like that. I'm like, I, I feel like I'm in my room, but I'm not exactly in my room. And then I have an oppressive demon on, uh, spirit upon me. And I notice it because either it manifests as the demon trying to pull me under, up under the bed through my covers or putting immense pressure over me. And I think, I think that's how it's been. And he kind of silences you, and you're, yeah. you're struggling very hard because, to call out to Jesus. Because I know I'm calling out to Jesus. I'm yelling as loud as I can, but nobody's hearing me. And, and that, I guess that spirit realm is a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's actually a sexually aggressive. Uh, sleep disturbances, insomnia, or total lack of sleep, suicidal tendencies. Those are those are definitely demonic. Some people in this church have dealt with that too. Uh, supernatural abilities, levitation, or unexplainable abilities. Uh, I'd say like super strength. Uh, when someone's possessed, it, you can get a bunch of them together and still can't hold them down, even if it's a small little girl. Uh, super resi supernatural residues such as ectoplasm. That's an unexplained phenomenon. What is that? What's <laughs> ectoplasm? I don't even e know. Ectoplasm, a lot of people refer it to like a green goo left over oh, by ghost okay. possession. But it's, yeah, like ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a slime. It's, it's, a, it's a green slime that's it's green used. Slime. Uh, it, it's green or black green. sometimes. Sometimes when people are, when a demon is casted out of a possessed person, they'll cough up like black stuff. Yeah. Unexplainable stench, foul, disgusting, or offensive odors. Now we talked about sulfur, rotten egg-like smell, but sometimes it can come across as like a, something like bitter or something offensive that hits your sinuses really hard. Uh, Xenoglossia, suddenly a sudden ability to, to speak multiple or even ancient languages. You know, something's wrong there. That ends that list for the, the uh, now I'm in Appendix B in the back. You guys don't have to turn there, but have it all written out here. Okay, so abnormal or rational loneliness, prone to accidents. I don't know if you always see that, that one clumsy person that's always tripping over something or knocking something over or something. <coughs> I mean, it could just be their personality, but a lot of a lot of times it's it's uh, demons trying to trip you up. I was about to say because my daddy used to tell everybody <clears throat> that Juanita can't walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> I don't believe that. But I, it was not dynamic. It was just part of my personality, yeah. and still is. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Addictions that control you. Um, a lot of people are bound by addictions, drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol. Um, alcoholics, the most severe cases. Electronics. Just, huh? Nowadays, it's electronics. Yeah. Your phones, your computers. Yeah. Try to take a phone or a computer from a child. Oh my God. I literally, I see it with my own eyes and I looked at my daughter because already it's over 13. Oh, mother, you don't know what you're, she says, mother, when she's mad at me. I looked at her. I said, try to take it away. About a month later or something, she was, Mackenzie did something and I happened to be there and she tried to take it away. And she went, whoo, I need to reach her. And I said, now you're telling me she, she ain't addicted? I'm praying for you, sister. She thing? got the phone, but it I've was, seen that in grocery she put a, a, Yes, and I've seen it in public. But I'm talking about eight-month-old babies. Crying, you know, they're yes. Sitting up and screaming and crying. Finally, the mother will give them the phone, and I mean, they calm right down. Calm right down. She'll put whatever app on there, yeah. you know, for them to watch it. I mean, that baby will take that phone away from that kid and let me tell you something you've got to battle with. Well, there was that, that news report about the 17 year old boy that the teacher took his uh, little Nintendo Switch console away. Yes. And brutally beat her. Brutally. And he ended up getting a life sentence because it was so brutal. Wow. So people always say, it's, oh, it's not culture. No, 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 no. Kids say it's the electronic because we the government's brainwashed it. Soon as Brady came home from school with the tablet, I went, oh. I said, this is not good. She looked at me, I said, this is not good. This isn't good. I'm so glad you'll be out of school soon. It was terrible. <laughs> and look what it's done. Nothing but trouble. Agitation for no reason. I, you always get around those type of people. You know, just the slightest thing sets them off. You feel like you're walking around with pins and needles. You don't even know what to do. Uh, blackouts or loss of time. Uh, I don't know. A lot of you have seen... Uh, the Chosen, and that's what would happen to Mary in the first episode. Yes. She always she like wake up somewhere bloody or something. Blasphemous thoughts against uh, God, creatures, or the gospel. A strong aversion to scripture reading and prayer. Attacked by sexual demons at night. Uh, incubus and succubus spirits. Now, you, you have to, if you have trouble with this, you need to pray it out. Because a lot of the, these, these incubus and succubus spirits attack you at night, and then you end up having an accident. And in old Jewish, uh, some old Jewish texts, they believed it was because these spirits take those unborn, that unborn seed and they use they they use they feed on it. Oh my gosh! And it's sick. or or they use them to create new spirits. To create new babies or spirits to feed to. Well, I'm saying they feed pretty much right. the children to other spirits. Oh. <laughs> well, they say it's actually fed to Lilith, um, but I don't want to get into all that right now. Uh, yeah. Chronic illness, compulsive sexual craving, and sins, especially perversions. There are a lot of perversions out there. Yeah. Perversion. Constant confusion in thinking, sometimes great difficult. Uh, sorry, constant confusion in thinking, uh, sometimes great difficulty in remembering things. I know my mom has a lot of <laughs> difficulty in remembering things. So I'll talk to her about something, and then more than two days later, she's like, we never discussed this. And yeah, yeah, I told her to make a dinner. <laughs> but you know what happens in families a lot, too. Um, not just with my mom. I would like to say, you know, there's a difference from, just sometimes you forget things. That's part of life. Yeah. This is, you're talking on a whole new level. Here. I am. So I just want to clarify that in case someone goes, oh, no, I was in No, 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 no. <laughs> these, these, uh, this is if it's it's constant. Okay. It just constantly happens. You know they don't have dementia. Right. 
We know they're not going through any episodes. It's just, I'm saying this is like it's constantly happening over and over and over again. To a point where it's like, well, I know I talked about that. I know okay. we set up this day. I know this. Yeah, so it's Start it's the, recording. And, and it's not like I'm <laughs> saying that the person's possessed. They're just being oppressed. So that's why we're giving allowances to, like the Bible says, to give allowances to our brothers and sisters because we all slip up. Right. We're all attacked. Um, right. Yeah. We should be praying for each other, not Amen. browbeating. Right. That's such a balance. Constant feelings of worthlessness, shame, guilt, suicidal thoughts. I'll like, yeah. I'd like to add that last one and that one I used to deal with uh, when I was younger and people were like well it gets worse when you get older and you figure out things I'm like I'm getting better in Jesus yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but I did have this that, that, that <coughs> one on this list and was suicidal for a long time yeah. but um, when God broke that when I surrendered and, and God broke that off of me and I started confessing when I found out you can confess the word <laughs> Start confessing the word. Now, <laughs> hey, I know my name. Thank you. I know I'm married. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it was, it was, I mean, it was so bad. I, I was afraid that when I had Julie that I was going to have a baby. It was so, it really was that bad. And, um, but I, I, I couldn't remember how old I was. I only forgot my name before, about four times. <laughs> but I know my name. I know I love I'm telling you that stuff is real. You do forget like crazy, but but when God delivers you, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, really. Amen. 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 A demonstration of extraordinary abilities, either ESP, which is um, extrasensory perception, or telekinesis. Extrasensory perception is where you can, like somebody's holding up a card on the other side of the wall, and you can. Just see through it, oh, see what the card is, is, that type of stuff. Wow. Telekinesis would be more like levitating or, you know, moving objects with your mind That's or something. Scary. Or not even just someone doing it, but you see a, an object floating just out of nowhere. Or like a lampshade moving when there's no wind in the room. The desire to do what is right, but have the inability to carry it out. Hmm. This also kind of similar to the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, the desire to do what's right should come from from God, leading you to, to do those things. Because if it isn't of God, it almost never inevitably fail. Um, disregard for physical appearance. Uh, sometimes you, you all see those uh, videos on YouTube where people go out. It's like, okay, I'm going out to Walmart today to see what weird people I can find. <laughs> but yeah, some people are. You can tell they're they're afflicted. Um, eating obsessions such as bulimia or anorexia nervosa. Uh, obesity, um, surfeiting, like the people that are like so obese they can't even walk and get out of bed or anything like that. Um, ending up someplace not knowing how you got there, that's similar to blackouts, but I, I don't know if that refers to sleepwalking. I used to sleepwalk a lot. Um, one time I, I woke up in the bathtub with scalding water. So, but I don't have those issues anymore. Thank you, Jesus. That can also happen when you get, if you got alcoholism and you get drunk and you don't know, you yeah. wake up the next day and go, how do you hear? Yeah, you just let the, you just kind of <laughs> subdued yourself and let the, the spirit take over completely. Like if you like, you know, you have a routine all the time, going to work every day. You don't remember the drive to work. Yeah, you just, you you're just so much. Yeah, you just end up there. Yeah. You're on autopilot. Yeah. Yes. yeah, autopilot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Did you have something, Don? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Exhibitionists. You want to undress and show yourself. These are the people that flash young children, other things like that. Flash ladies. Um, extreme fear, anxiety, or phobias. <coughs> extreme restlessness, especially in spiritual environments. <coughs> I, I know a lot of us get um, some, there's just those days when you're in church, there's always that one day where you just can't keep your eyes open. And it's like there's and, and and I believe what it is is it's a spirit trying to prevent you from getting that word that you, God needed to give to you. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you start getting those, um, if I were you, I would I would step out real quick, cast out that that, that spirit, absolutely, and and go back in and, and listen intently. Hopefully, because you, know, you don't want to miss that word that God has for you. No, no, yeah. it changed your life. Um, feeling like you've had a band around your head. I, 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 I've never experienced that. I'm not too certain the idea behind this, but it could be kind of like, like it's oppressing your, your mind. I, I get a tight chest and that's anxiety. Like I, I feel like, like my chest is being pulled inward. I don't get that too often. Um, extreme or sudden interest in the paranormal or dark side. That's like getting into witchcraft and other things like that. Yeah, it can open some terrible doors. I, uh, for a while, you know, this was years ago, uh, before I got delivered and all, but <clears throat> it got to the point where I wouldn't watch TV unless it was like a haunting or some kind of paranormal. I mean, I, I couldn't watch anything else. Mm -hmm. And this stuff, it, 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 it will, you, you become addicted mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, you do. You uh, have to be real careful what you know, what. And I, well, after that, after I got delivered, I don't want, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do this anymore. Just, mm -hmm. you know, so I can protect myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you have to watch out if you're going to get into it. Especially those slasher flips and stuff that people are so into. And I so, um, like dark side paranormal oh, stuff. I'm not, I'm not into I think that. there's some people that like become really into crystals. Those can hold on to the spirits within them. And yeah. you don't know what you're opening up when you're trying to release crystals or these bright rooms and bright Horoscopes, other things like that. I think the biggest trap. As I say, well, it's just a movie, or it's just a game, or it's just. But that's what the devil uses. Right. Just this, or just this. Yes. not it's serious. Serious it is. Wow. Uh, extreme sleepiness around spiritual things and activities. That's a little different than restlessness. But um, restlessness is if you're like up and about all the time, fidgety, that kind of stuff. Uh, feeling like you are invisible to everyone, even God, or hearing voices in your head. That's never good. <laughs> Unless it, you, you're, well, because that's in your head, but God speaks to the, the, the soul of the heart, the spirit. That, Sorry, the, the spirit. That extreme sleepiness around spiritual things and activities, I would almost think that would be how the Bible tells you to be sober, pretty much sober mind. Because if uh, your sleep sleepiness is pretty much like uh, the opposite of like sudden being sober. Yeah, uh, that would be a, a, a spirit of um, yeah sleepiness. As it was sleepiness and um, slothfulness or heaviness too. Heaviness. It falls all within those same categories there. Uh, <laughs> Hostility or fear when encountering someone in deliverance work. Of course, that, that spirit around is going to try and get that deliverance ministry to flounder, but uh, that's why we've got to pray those things out too. A hatred and bitterness towards others for no justifiable reason. I've met plenty of people like that. 
Um, we had someone in our church that was kind of weird, but uh, uh, no longer here, but um, have sexual desire with someone of the same sex, animals or objects. Hypersensitive feelings, hypersensitivity to hearing or touch, uh, inability to concentrate or focus, irrational and uncontrollable anger or rage. We kind of covered some of these earlier on, but I just pulled everything out of the index to put up here. Um, irrational guilt and or shame or feel unclean um, because of what you've done or something like that. But sometimes it could be, you can go way over the top and you're just beating yourself down completely. Irrational laughter or crying. I accidentally doubled it up on the slide, uh, the two bottom ones. But long-term illness and diseases, loss of memory, time and events. Um, sometimes people are just, I, I knew this girl in, in high school and she was just sick all the time. And and that that is a spirit of, of um, infirmity and uh, that's just not how we're built God didn't build us to be sickly and those are things we need to cast out too but she wasn't just sick because she was sick she was sick because she was telling herself that she was sick yes convincing herself yeah, yeah. I have an uncle that you speak uh, what you have <laughs> every word is a seed if you speak you can you have we have the power of life and death in our and what we speak to ourselves, what we speak over others. Um, I had an uncle that really just kept telling himself he was sick, and and he wasn't sick, but his body was literally manifesting the disease and illness, and he looked so sickly. <coughs> and he could have gotten over it, but then his mom passed away from colon cancer, and he was blaming everyone else, and uh, but, you know, you can't blame anyone for colon cancer. Um, but, yeah, he ended up shutting himself in his room. And, uh, he makes, he made my grandfather, uh, my grandfather stay outside of the house pretty much. Like, he kicked him out of the house and he'd go wild. And, and my grandpa has nowhere else to go, so he has to stay out of the house most of the time until, you know, my uncle's sleeping. So it's a pretty bad situation. But what these spirits can do to you. Mental illness, not all mental illness is caused by spirits, but there are some. Um, objects falling, moving, or breaking without human interference. Uh, negative conversation. Again, don't speak negatively. We need to be encouraging and lifting up. Uh, self-defeating or self-destructive thoughts. Um, so a man thinks, so he becomes. Persistent depression, oppression, heaviness, sadness. Uh, rejection, unworthiness, insecure feelings, self-abusive behaviors. Sudden chills or overwhelming heat in the body. Now, I experience the overwhelming heat. Sometimes when I'm sleeping or I go down for a nap, for some reason, my body will overheat to the point where uh, my skin, I can feel it's physically freezing, but I'm overheating at the same time um, to the point where I'm pouring sweat in a 60 degree room. So I got I, I stop and I, I start praying about it, casting it out. Sudden, sudden interference with bodily functions, temporary situations. Um, maybe you get bouts of like where you can't breathe. Sometimes I'm sitting there and I forget to breathe. I, I don't know if, that, if that's demonic influence or not either, but um, or maybe just the the presence of a demon somewhere. Uh, pain without justifiable explanation, especially in the head or stomach. 
physical ailments can only be alleviated by a command of spiritual authority, someone having to pray, prayed out, cast it out. Numbness or in arms or legs and temporary paralysis, like what Richard was saying, I get the sleep paralysis too. Sometimes I'll be I'll I'll be wide awake and I can't move and I'm wondering what's going on, why can't I move? I, I don't get that very often anymore at all. Um, sudden personality or attitude changes, severe contrast, and may appear schizophrenic. <coughs> Those are what some people call either schizophrenic or bipolar, but it's, it's demonic influence. Um, supernatural experiences such as hauntings, movement or disturbances of objects, terror-filled dreams <coughs> often having demonic images. Richard would tell me sometimes that he'd have these dreams where he's like in this demonic war machine and there's so much blood that war. That was, that was like right after I'd gotten saved. <coughs> I think the, the devil was really wanting me to just fall away from the church mm -hmm. because, uh, I mean, when you're saved, you, you will be attacked by the enemy. Yeah, especially when you're about to get a breakthrough. That's when they start attacking you more. But I, I really don't have that much data, Caitlin. Or I've never done it well. Tormenting thoughts or images, unexplainable buzzing in ears, inability to speak or hear. Unexplainable disappearances of items and unexplainable returns of those items. I, I've seen that happen sometimes. I'm like, I know it was there, and I come back and looking everywhere, and then it was there. And it could be, it could be that the item isn't disappeared, but it could be that the the spirit is clouding your mind, and you're looking at the same place. I could be looking for uh, something in my cabinet, grocery cabinet, looking everywhere, and it's right there in front of my face. <laughs> And, and then you're like, Mom, where is it? And she's like, it's right there, right in front of your face. But, right. Um, violent or reckless behaviors, thrill seekers, uh, vulgar language and actions. <coughs> um, unexplainable sudden severe <coughs> headaches, wanting to break something or hurt someone. Those aren't natural. Feelings. I mean, maybe out of anger you want to break something, but just break something just to break something, or to hurt someone just to hurt someone. But we all know that in Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Once you're free from that, don't open the door ever again. Amen. Close it and leave it shut. Because when you open it again, it's gonna it's gonna be tenfold of the yes. issue you're dealing with. Um, so I guess we do have time to play that video. It's gonna go into more of the sign of the demonic presence to keep an eye out for in your home because a lot of times we're complacent and we don't even pay attention to the things around us. We could end up uh, you want to catch the, the signs of a demon presence early before it gets too bad in your home. You probably want to, uh, you know, anoint the, the door frames around your home. Um, because there could be, I mean, you could be leaving a door open for the unsaved person in your family that's living with you, and they can be inviting that demon into your house. And, uh, I mean, it's never too late to cast out a demon. It's just you're going to be going through hell trying to deal with um, these demonic presences. It's on the desktop. Yeah, it's on the desktop. Five scary signs. Yeah. Sorry, you set it up so the people on uh, Facebook and YouTube can see the video with us. Oh. That's okay. 
On this channel, we talk a lot about people getting attacked by demons, getting haunted by demons, becoming possessed by demons. What I think we haven't talked enough about is what you can actually do to stop it. Well, today we're going to take the first steps in helping you deal with demons by looking at what could be some potential warning signs that they're coming in the first place. What's good, guys? My name is Nicholas Blaylock, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the top five scary signs of a demonic presence. Let's get into it. Number five on our list is objects moving on their own. Now, this should be no surprise and, frankly, a pretty obvious sign that something is up or that a demon is around. But what you might not know is what stage this means that you're at. The process of demonic possession has stages. Four of them, to be exact. Father Gabriel Ammer passed away now, but used to be the chief exorcist in Rome, discovered that there are four stages of demonic possession. These stages are as follows. We got infestation, oppression, obsession, and then lastly, possession. Now the first step of these four is infestation, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. He describes this stage as the haunted house type of face. This is where a demon is getting itself adjusted in your home or environment. It's stalking you. It's deciding whether or not it wants to possess you in the first place. It's during this time that you may see objects move without you or anyone else touching them. Things appearing in different places than when you left them. If you see this happening in your home, then you have to take note of it. Because at this point, you're still in stage one. And it's possible to take preventative measures and deal with this demon early if you let it progress and move on to stage two or stage three, then fighting this demon is going to be a lot more difficult. Number four on this list is the smell. Now, it's been widely speculated on for a long period of time if demons even have a smell. Some people make the argument that it isn't possible since they don't possess any life force. However, many people who have had run-ins with demons do claim that there is a significant and discernible odor they can detect from these creatures of hell. Some people describe this as a bitter sort of stench, whereas others describe it as the smell of death. Surprisingly though, the most common description for a demon and their smell is actually the smell of sulfur. Sulfur is a chemical element which in its solid form looks like a bright yellow rock. Sulfur is the fifth most common element on the planet and has a wide variety of applications that we use for it today. Although it is a useful chemical for making fertilizers and pharmaceuticals, the stench of it is truly awful. Imagine mixing the fresh spray of a skunk with rotten eggs. That's pretty much what you get when you smell sulfur. Now apparently this is what a demon smells like, but I'm a little bit skeptical that it smells as prominent as sulfur. A strong sulfuric smell is hard to miss, and I feel like if that was the case for demons, then we'd have way more accounts of demonic stench from victims and in the media. Because it isn't as widely spoken about, I would imagine that there is this odor in the air, but it isn't so overwhelmingly prominent that it's the first thing that you know. So potentially it's one of those things that when you go over those events in your mind again, after the incident, you realize, oh wait, I actually had been smelling that for a little while, and at the time, I didn't chalk it up to anything. That's why it's really important that you know this information now, so that if you do smell the slight scent of sulfur in the air, you can potentially ready yourself for what may be coming. Number three on this list is weather manipulation. Now, we're going to speak later in this video about how demons can create the illusion of temperature change. However, some higher level demons actually have the full-on capability to manipulate the weather. This can come in different forms, with some having signature weather effects, lightning storms, thunder, heavy rainfall, all of these are likely byproducts of a demonic presence. In fact, hundreds of years ago during the medieval times, this theory was already formed. It was believed that thunder and lightning were caused by evil spirits that were flying around the air or demons. They weren't the only culture who believed in this either. Pope Urban II in 1091 actually authorized a prayer for bishops to perform when they were getting hit with these storms. Grant, O Lord, that the sound of this bell may drive away harmful storms, hail, and strong winds, and that the evil spirits that dwell in the air may, by thy almighty power, be struck to the ground. They would then ring a massive bell, and it was thought that the sound would jar these demons and send them back to where they came from. Although there's no evidence that this loud ring from a bell would cause these demons any harm, it is clear that for thousands of years, horrible weather occurrences have been linked to the presence of dangerous demons. Now, with the help of science, we know that there can be multiple reasons for a lightning storm or bad weather. So not every time we get a massive downpour does it mean that a demon is the cause and is around the area. However, 
it can be an early warning sign and something that you should probably take note of moving forward. Number two on this list is a serious change in the temperature. Many people note that during their encounters with a demon, they experience a very drastic and sudden shift in temperature. Now, I can't qualify this as just being a temperature change to hot or to cold because it seems that both happen in different circumstances. There are often stories about people who are currently being possessed by a demon as burning up with a super hot fever. We see it in many popular TV shows or movies today that when an exorcism occurs, the person who is being possessed may have a fever that is far hotter than a human should ever reach. My theory behind this is that your body is currently fighting off the biggest invasion of a virus that it has ever had to deal with. This virus or demon also isn't just attacking your immune system like a normal virus would, but it's attacking your entire soul and spirit. This causes your body to go through the most harrowing battle of its life and raise its temperature up to a ridiculous level. Now, when we're talking about extreme cold from a demon, usually this happens when you're simply in the presence of one and it isn't trying to take over your body. Eugene Mormon, who has a PhD in theology, believes that this phenomenon occurs because demons are vampiric in nature. Now, what I mean by that is that they're constantly looking for a life force to feed off of, since they don't have one of their own. Therefore, the atmosphere around around a demon doesn't become cold, but you simply feel cold as it's always inherently sucking some of your energy. Like a parasite, its presence will suck you of your life force and leave you feeling low, depressed, exhausted, and it will give you the feeling that your surroundings are a lot colder than they actually are. Number one on this list is your pets. That's right, guys, your dog, your cat, <laughs> Maybe even your fish, they know better than you when it comes to demons or nasty otherworldly entities. For the dog owners out there, have you ever observed your canine buddy when a big storm is coming? I don't mean a light drizzle, but when there is a massive storm on the way, how does your pet act before the storm? As a former dog owner myself, I remember that my dog would often act very strangely. Wouldn't want to go outside when she would love to go outside at any other point. Would occasionally go and hide in a room that I would never normally see her in, and would generally act far more skittish than her typical self. They sense this change in the weather before we've even felt anything at all. In fact, if it wasn't for meteorologists, I'd have no idea what's coming. Well, it turns out that this animalistic instinct about something to come is not just for the weather, but that our pets can sense other things as well. Whenever in the presence of a demon, it's said that our animals, and specifically dogs, will become restless. They won't be able to sit still. Their tail will always be moving, but not in a happy dog-like way, in an anxiety-inducing way. It will feel as if your dog is on the lookout for something, believing that something unsettling will be coming. This isn't exclusively dogs, though. It's said to move towards plants as well. Plants will wilt and die in the presence of a demon. And if we think about our previous entry about the chill that someone will feel around a demon, this makes a lot of sense. Assuming that demons are parasitic in nature and suck the surrounding life force around them, then a plant would seriously be in trouble. As a human, we have a sizable life force and we can sustain this parasitic behavior, but a small plant with only a small life force and limited defenses, it's not gonna be able to survive this type of energy sucking action. Therefore, it will wilt and die rather suddenly due to the exposure to this demon. So if you ever see your dogs or other animals acting very strangely and your plants have suddenly wilted away, then be wary. You may very likely be in the presence of a demon. Well, there you have it, guys. That is our list of the top five scary signs of a demon. Um, I'm going to close on that. Um, yeah, so we, we must be always on guard. Have a sober mind. Make sure what's going on around us. Don't get too complacent. Shouldn't get complacent in all of it. Sometimes we get caught up in our busy lives and we don't see the burning bush <coughs> like God wants us to see. But, um, I'm not saying burning bush is demonic, but I'm just saying you need to stop like Moses to, to see the burning bush and listen to God's warnings. But, uh, yeah, other than that, do you guys have any questions? I have a comment for you, Josh. Uh, you know, most of us remember the young man that freaked out and went to uh, Colleen and killed all those people at the movies. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know or not. You know me from here. I remember it. I remember, I remember it. it. I don't yeah. Right. The guy lived in my neighborhood. Son, and they live in this big mansion. It's just a yep, in Temple. house. Actually. Yeah. Oh, no, it's right. And uh, I know one day it was up for sale. And so a friend of mine, she was looking for a house. And so they gave 
same day after us, I didn't recognize the address, and we pulled up in front of it. I tried to tell her right then, right there, let's don't even go in this one. The uh, real estate lady was like, well, no, come check it out, you're already here. And so I was trying to tell her on the way <coughs> in there, you know, hopefully she will tell you, because I think by law they have to let you know if there's been a murder or something like that there. Well, she never did. So when we went in there, her shoulders went up real high, and she couldn't understand why she couldn't get movement from her neck and that kind of thing, you know, because her shoulders were up so high. And so knowing what has happened there, under my breath, I just prayed in tongues. I didn't know what else to do, so I was just speaking in tongues. And so we went from room to room to room, and that mansion's got like five bedrooms and six bathrooms. And it's, a, it's a huge place. And so we went in one room, and it wasn't so bad. We went in another room, and at the end of the hall, somehow you know, you just know. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, I guess, lets you know. Anyway, so I was praying in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord has ever walked in there. I said under my breath, Father, I just place a head around me by the blood of Jesus, and that well, anything in me in that room be to any prevail with me, my friend, or even the bloody shot in the house. So when we walked in there, I mean, literally, that is true. We walked in that room, it was totally normal. The next thing you know, she turned around, my friend turned around, looked at me, and she said, is it cold in here to you? And I, I wasn't going to give the devil any credit. I turned around and shook my head and I said, no, but I'm a hot nature person, so it really wasn't. And then the lady that was in the house, she said, you know, it is to me. And she said, seems like it's cooler in this room than it was the other. And so anyway, she was showing her the big closet and whatnot and going on and on and on. And you could literally feel the atmosphere change in that room. Mm -hmm. So if I couldn't take it no more, I spoke up and I told that lady, I said, this was his bedroom, true? And she looked at me shocked, and I told her, I've been from Belton for a long time. I know who lived here. I said, this is the young man that went to clean and kill those people at Lucas. And she and my friend looked at me like, you what? And I was trying to tell her, I tried to say, we walked in here. And she said, yeah. She said, now that you said something, she said, yeah, I didn't know that you knew. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. And I told her, I said, this is his room, is it not? And she said, you know, it's odd that you would say that. Yeah, this was his bedroom. And so she got to sit down and she explained to my friend what happened, what what just, Mercy. he just went off the deep end. Yeah. When I first heard that, I thought, well, you know, he got high drugs, he was drunk, it was something no, like this. You know, they yes. never proved any of that. He was full of the demon. He yes, was. he was. He and was. that thing took him over. And by the grace of God, you know, we had blue piece and temple. Why clean? I don't know. But it went clean. He drove through his truck with his, you know, through the window of the whole nine yards and just started killing people. And she told my friend that. And so when we got ready to leave, she was going to show up the back door. We told her, no, we don't really want to see it. And I flat told her, we're Christians. We want nothing to do with the house. We want to buy it to get to it for free. So we walked out and got in the car, and she looked at me, and she was white. She could be in the face, and she said, you know, how she was not going to say anything until you did. And I told her, I know. And she said, I thought they had to tell you. And see, to my knowledge, I know uh, she was in my family in real estate, to. and she said by law, if someone was killed in that house or anything of that nature, by law they had to take it. She totally didn't say anything mm -hmm. until I brought it up. And she did tell me, yes, it's odd that you knew. The only reason I knew, Josh, is because when they said the temperature changed before senior deal, I knew that I knew because I'd gone and prayed with people for houses, mm -hmm. and that would happen. Yeah. And so, sure enough, it got cool in there. And then, just stupid things began to happen. A light came on in the bathroom. There was absolutely no reason for that light to come on. In fact, she stopped talking and she looked at us and was like, I guess somebody left this on. She went and turned it off. 20 minutes later, it came back on. Yeah. It's only by itself. 
<laughs> so I knew there was something going on in that room. And so we got out of there as soon as possible. And because we had, I had pled the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. over us, my friend told me, I don't feel any different. And I told him, no, because I knew we were going to go in there. And so my I pled the blood while we were doing that. And I told him, too, I was praying the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, you know, your film is absolutely correct. If you ever come across something like that, and if you're a young believer <coughs> or you're a strong believer, I strongly suggest stop what you're doing and get out. Because I don't care how powerful you are in the Lord, these things want to follow you home. Like Pastor Roger said this not long ago, they need a body to yeah. move in. Yeah. You know, they're just out there a spirit. And unless they get a cat, a dog, a pig, you know, from the them with all the demons in them, or they really want a human is what they want. Mm -hmm. They want to walk, talk, speak, and they want to affect you. So your best deal is just get out. So, but that does happen. So, we anyway, that's my call. We had a house across the street from us, and one day a young teenage girl comes running over to the house, totally freaked out to Pastor Troy. And she said, things are falling off the walls and, and moving around in the house. And I don't think they told her when they moved in here, but the lady that lived in the house prior to them moving in there, they found her dead in the garage in a car. She committed suicide. Yeah. It wasn't long after that this came to the house, too. And the thing is, is her mother had a heart attack in her kitchen. And so before she could get around the corner, things started flying off the hearth on the fireplace. And so the little girl, bless her heart, really didn't put two and two together. And so when I walked in, sure enough, there was glass. There was stuff everywhere. I ran in. I was trying to wake the lady up, and I told the kid, here's my phone call, 911. Tell them what to do. So she did, and so by the time they got there, I got her when she was talking. She Thank could goodness. set up, and I told Thank her right Jesus. then, right there, get out of this house as soon as you can. And so they came in, and they got her, and so she asked me, will you help my daughter sweep up this glass? And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> Your daughter doesn't need to be in this house. And she, you know, sadly, y'all, they just didn't get it. And I was trying to tell her, there's something in the house. And she said, no, no, I've been here all day. There's nobody. And I said, I didn't tell you nobody. I'm telling you, something is spiritual, supernatural is in this house. And she said, what, like a ghost? And I said, worse. Demon. And so then she was like, well, can she stay with you to her? Husband got home, and so she came over and she stayed for a while. And the dad came and got her, and y'all then went right back in the house. Oh my goodness. Which it was like, okay. And they end up living there? there? They never left? Huh? Did they end up leaving or staying? Yeah, they, they don't keep the house on very long. Wow. No. Just didn't take it back. Yeah, they, they moved quickly. Anybody need prayer? <laughs> <laughs> you need prayer for that house. <laughs> 